Review cultist. And I'm Dr. Leviathan. And we're here to discuss those internet stories most creepy and most pasta. And I'm just glad to be back after two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dr. Leviathan has been away for two weeks. Um, tonight's episode? Lost episodes. Yeah, <laughs> that works. <laughs> so, for those of you just in the, uh, not in the know, uh, creepy pasta are... Um, scary stories that were have been copied and pasted across the internet. Uh, the term eventually became known as copy pasta due to a short form, and the creepy ones got turned into creepy pasta. So there you go. Uh, lost episodes. <clears throat> we're just gonna dive into this one. Uh, you can check it. Out. Oh, actually, before we do that, I guess you can check it out at creepypasta.wiki and uh, Mr. Creepypasta on YouTube does a splendid job reading it uh, along, I guess, I believe it's on Slime Beast's actual channel, not on his channel. Uh, we'll leave descriptions in the comments, in, or in the descriptor below, uh, wherever this gets posted. So, Now, for, I mean, if you're listening to this, I'm assuming you know a fair bit about Creepypastas and are aware of kind of a subgenre called Lost Episodes, which is Lost Episodes of TV shows like, I'm assuming, Simpsons, the Cares Bears one, Chipmunks, SpongeBob. Home Improvement, I actually recently saw it, read one. So, <laughs> and they're completely off the norm of the show. They're wrong, like, in horrible ways sometimes. Usually it's graphic mat- uh, material that shouldn't be in the show, or uh, demonic presence in the sh- in the uh, video or in the videos, just disturbing footage um, that you don't expect to see in an episode of your favorite cartoon or uh, sitcom show or whatever. Yeah, um, actually, and, you know this actually really ties into something recently that came out. Um, by the when this gets launched, people will know about it for about three weeks. But um, there is actually a show or a uh, uh, a infomercial skit uh, done off Adult Swim called um, Too Many Cooks. And it's very much follows a two a lost episodes thing because the it's essentially eleven minutes of a uh, eleven minutes of, uh, of an opening for a TV show called Too Many Cooks and just it starts normally like a, like an eighties nineties family sitcom like uh, Family Matters and just spirals into madness as it starts crossing genre within other eighties and nineties TV shows and there's this killer in the show or in on screen that's going across those different genres and just like hacking everybody to bits. So it's a really interesting video, okay. uh, but it's essentially but lost back episodes. To our episode. Yeah, but essentially, yeah, that's essentially it's a lost episode. So that's kind of what lost episodes are. But this <clears throat> this creepy pasta yeah. attempts to explain every single lost episode's pasta. Yeah. So, and at least at the beginning, he tries to explain it like it's like it's not supernatural or anything like that. It's just this crazy guy. We'll get to but that. anyway, yeah, we'll get into that. So lost episodes. Um, you're going to have to give me a hand with this one, because I don't have my notes. <laughs> well, our, our narrator, who, as per the norm, goes unnamed, uh, when he was a kid, he had a friend named Sid. And Sid's family was fairly well-to-do, so they had, you know, more toys and whatnot. And by toys, I mean, in this video case, specifically. <laughs> well, video editing the equipment yeah, in the first cause, place, yeah. because... Because the there was no point in having software because there was no computer that did it. Yeah, um, at least not available to the general population. <clears throat> and uh, this is going to be a brief as hell rundown. Um, but his first uh, endeavor is to fix Old Yeller so that it has a happy ending where the dog just Got gets better, better yeah. from the rabies, <laughs> as opposed to uh, the boy having to put him down and it being a real downer. <clears throat> But anywho, uh, Sid, uh, with the help of our narrator, starts doing more and more work on movies, TV shows, and the, and the like. Um, without and eventually, st- he gets bent away from fixing the and unhappy endings and starts doing weird shit, gross things. Um, you know, throwing in violence as opposed to editing it out. Yeah. Um, Because he suddenly switches to, like, no, the happy endings are the lie, and 
Exactly. The violent and darker stuff is truth. And this, and the whole thing, just like this obsession takes over his life, and he yeah. basically, you know, stops doing anything else. Um, he never really did anything. I mean, like, the guy, uh, the narrator explains that, like, because his parents were well-to-do, um, they let him just kind of roam around the house and not get a job or anything like that. Well, the narrator, as a kid, had to get a job and stuff. Yes, but... Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, it's assumed that he... Well, I mean, it's implied that he spirals further and further into yeah. his obsession. As opposed to, you know actually watching TV at any point, he just fixes it. Yeah. Like, he also starts um, going, and he also, like, I guess has, like, all with all his free time, he also starts doing this editing of these creepy post or these uh, lost episodes, or these wrong, or these, like, corrected videos, and then starts taking them to all these video stores across, like, I, I guess, like, wherever he can. Yeah, basically. Like, he goes to, like, all these old, like, like out-of-the-way ones, like, normal ones, I guess, I don't know, wherever he can find a video store basically. that he goes to video stores and switches the tapes. Yeah. Like, finds, you know, a tape of the same thing he's got on him and switches them or just whatever. Yeah. And then takes the new tape that he's got home and fixes that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, our narrator, you know, goes to visit him one day and he's all like just totally engrossed and Animating you know, doesn't something. care. Like, barely and, even acknowledges the narrator's presence. And, yeah, he's just glued to his uh, his writing. And his that's desk. when our narrator is just like, "All right, well, I'm fucking done with Sid." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and and yeah, just departs because he doesn't he doesn't know how to handle this right now. So and then years later, like uh, I think he's in his thirties or something. Yeah, thirties. Uh, he goes. He's you know wondering, so he calls up the number the number's no longer in existence so he goes by the house and the house is just it's decrepit and there's a foreclosure notice on the front door but he he thinks well maybe maybe because he knows where the parents used to hide a key under a rock or something in the by the back door yeah so he goes into the house and he's checking through the house and he also everything just looks same, messed up but it's but all, it's all all the furniture and everything's there. Mm -hmm. It's just really old and really, you know, just Un left unkept. It's like, been unlived in, yeah. basically, for years. This, seemingly the entire time he's been gone. Yeah. Um, and he goes upstairs to the parents' bedroom, and they're both lying in bed dead. And he's like, "Well, that's not normal. People yeah. don't die at the same time in bed." And then he realizes, "Wait." When was the last time I saw so parents? He, <laughs> so he tries to go, you know, he tries to call out and it's not working. And yeah. He goes to the garage where Sid had his little workshop, if you will, and he finds Sid plugged into a TV. He's dead, but there's a cartoon Sid. Looping constantly. Well, the background. Well, the background. Sid, kind of... cartoon Sid, is there and he's all like, hey, how are you? And um, the story, basic. I mean, there's an interaction there, and he's. But the story ends with our narrator turning off, or sorry, <clears throat> unplugging the TV. Yeah. Theoretically killing Sid, but maybe not. Maybe just making him dormant. Who knows? <clears throat> well, I mean, Left to the imagination. Yeah, exactly. It's implied, but. Well, if you plug something into a TV and you turn off the TV, you don't necessarily turn off what's plugged into it. Yeah. But. That's all speculation and hearsay. It's I like the way it ended, mm -hmm. you know, with the ambiguity because it leaves the door open for either the author of this one or some other author to do another, like to do another pasta featuring Sid. Yeah, like he's back. He's still there. He's he's gone into the network. Exactly. Well, he's become syndicated, or <laughs> or someone else, you know, puts Turns in out. the TV. Yeah, you know, and. It, it could have. I mean, okay. Yeah, like somebody finds this old With old what old it old is, or... with, with the science that doesn't exist but exists in this story where he's hooked himself up to a TV, I see no reason why he couldn't be found and restored. Yeah. I see you found my. I see you found some technology from the Russian sleep experiment. Well, no, just... no, no, no. Because that's just <laughs> bullshit. This. Okay. <laughs> I know we, we 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 constantly go back and forth over it's like it's pseudoscience slash magic though with with that so well but this one is you're gonna say a little bit more feasible 
maybe not more feasible, but it doesn't go into so much detail that I can refute it, like, easily. Yeah. So, it's just kind of super science, you yeah. know? It, it's, I mean, it doesn't exist. Yeah. But he doesn't tell me how Sid did it. Yeah, exactly. So I it can't tell him that it doesn't and not, work. Not like in Resident, or not Resident, Resident, uh, Resident Sleep Experiment, where they, they go into detail like on how the gas works and stuff, and it's like, no, that's not how that works. Yeah. It's but, not how biology works. Anyways, yeah. Away from that. Yeah. <laughs> Back into this game. <laughs> we did Engage. that. People can watch or listen to that episode. Yeah. Now, so, yeah. Yeah, it, it's... Sorry, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, like, the ending, um, I was actually thinking about this last night when I was reading the story again. Um, we were we were saying that it, like, it might have been, like, it's kind of, it, I remember, like, yesterday we were kind of discussing how it could have been, um... Oh, this... Supernaturally kind of thing, This but, like, ending but, is a bit of a fuck you. Yeah. Because the whole, the whole episode is it's, unbelievable, it's, but plausible. It felt more like, like, the whole rest of the story, up until the ending, felt like it could have been an episode of Criminal Minds, or Well, it felt like, like it that. could have like actually thriller. happened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, you've got a dead body plugged into a TV. Well, that doesn't happen. Yeah. That can't happen. However, what that does do is it leaves, um, I'm trying to think of, I don't know how old this, uh, creepypasta is, but... There's a show, uh, there's a Flash show that just started. If a lost episode of Flash comes up, Sid can still m- muck with it, in theory, yeah. based on yeah, what has happened. Yeah, he's just able to do it a little bit more weirdly. Yeah. So it does save it that way, like it saves it so that, yeah, it still answers future lost episodes yeah. stories. That being said, He'll, they also... it would have been better if he'd have just been, you know, dead or, or working. missing. Or just like not, or left a note or something, left a tape, um, like a like a goodbye tape or something like that, and then he just went. He's just not there, so like he's still out there somewhere editing tapes. Exactly. He, um, yeah, that yeah. would have been better. Um, yeah, the the. What I was trying to say earlier was uh, uh, the whole, like how we like we see that the cartoon and some of that is on the screen and whatnot. Um, but what I and we 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 read we read earlier that he was actually starting to draw animate him his own things. For shows and stuff, um, like that's what actually what stu- uh, makes the um, the narrator just like up and leave is that he saw him uh, animating this really well drawn but grotesque like headless dancer. Um, so what I was thinking is like just maybe not even to pull it from Supernatural. This is just kind of this is speculation for a point. But um, what if what we see on the screen or what the narrator sees on the screen actually isn't anything supernatural? It's just the guy Sid animated himself in a bunch of, like, different scenes and just had to loop the uh, the background and whatnot and then just, plugged, like, essentially suicided himself by plugging himself and mutilating himself the way he did and then to make it look like that. So what was on the screen is actually just an animation. But when he come, when he sees the narrator, he's all like, hey! Yeah, I, I don't know. I was... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a little weird. Like, there's... It, it's a little bit more likely that it's supernatural other than just being, like, a coincidence that he also animated... Not supernatural. It's science fiction. Yeah, science fiction. That he animated a... Um, um, a, so his himself to say hey to just out of out of the blue sometimes, but yeah no the super I like that, the that, sci-fi that doesn't thing. yeah that that wouldn't I mean you'd be relying on coincidence on yeah, coincidence there. exactly unless he kept doing it like every couple and of also years. it's not said that that's the case it's yeah. not said that I know he's... that's like I said it's speculation I was just like I was I'm just thinking, saying I was it's something that popped speculation okay. all right you're wrong all right fine. yeah I <laughs> don't get me wrong I you know creative thinking thinking outside the box but the answer that's presented here is that it's is he's packed himself into the computer exactly <laughs> well into the tv at yeah. least but yeah that that's what you're led to believe so yeah that's what it is unfortunately mm-hmm. because the rest of it was very gritty very realistic in terms of like in terms of well as far as pasta it was pasta just to go it was feasible yeah it, it, it like it wasn't gritty. It wasn't you know like a noir. It was just it was feasible. Yeah, and I appreciated that. And mm-hmm. then to and have that ending that just comes out of left field with this hot science fiction BS, I was just kind of like, really, that seems lazy. Yeah, it seems like it also seems kind of like a turnaround for Sid's personality. Like turns uh, Sid's direction. Like he went from being like happy and like trying to like make videos happy, then trying to make them twisted and stuff because that's the truth according to him. And then he made himself a caricature, 
a, his a caricature backup onto the TV into a happy fantasy world. Well, it wasn't even a backup. He just spent so long in the TV that his body died. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, so you're saying like that he was actually probably alive for most of the for a little bit at least after he plugged himself in like body wise, and then it just shut down after well, years of for neglect. The two two or three days that it takes to die from dehydration. Yeah, assuming that he was fully hydrated beforehand, which I highly yeah, doubt. Yeah, he probably lasted about a day. A uh, day or two, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, no, I, I like how like the story did try to explain some of the old lost episodes because they like a lot of the ones they reference. Or actually, I don't think they reference a whole lot, but they were uh, they. I like how like if if the story took place like 2010 or something like that uh, is when this guy came back to it. It explains everything up until that point, and then has the potential to to, uh, to go with uh, to explain other ones um, with Sid. Or also, he was. I think he even mentioned like you, you've also probably also noticed other lost episodes uh, that have been either copycats or people trying to mimic Sid's work kind of thing. So yeah, he doesn't put all of the. He doesn't blame, place, shall yeah. we say, on Sid for the lost episodes. He makes him the pioneer. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Or at least, you know, one of the more prolific individuals. Yeah. Like, other people might have done, like, one or two shows, but Sid was out there, you know, getting Doing his it. work out to... Yeah, he was distributing <clears throat> back in the day. Yeah, when he had to do it, you know, by beating the pavement and, you know going into stores and you hear that you young lost episode makers (laughs) Sid's a goddamn hero well not really (laughs) anywho (laughs) um yeah no I remember when I first started reading this I like I loved the hell out of it because of the um of just how kind of like grounded it felt and then that I I did like the ending for for to a degree um I thought it was a little off like it was uh, it did feel a little off but I didn't mind it I like the ending I just it was a like it is re- a, a direct right it's turn. It's a it's a lazy thing. <laughs> um, it, it's just yeah, especially it's after at the throwing beginning in the mentions... sci-fi for no reason, and that was just kind of. Especially at the beginning, where he mentions like, I know you guys think that like you, if you guys believe that thing, these things are haunted or there's something supernatural or something or something weird afoot there, um, you may not want to read any further because this I'm about to blow this whole story out of the wa- truth out of the water. And then you end it with a with a fantastical um, yeah. ending or like or, or like thing. It's like yeah, it's <clears throat> so it, it tried really well for up until the ending to be a grounded like this is actually what how who was creating lost episodes back in the day. Yeah, no, no, it, it, yeah. it was good for that, and like I like I say, I appreciate the ending for what it is. I just don't think it should have been that. Yeah. Like, that ending would have been better in a different... Pasta. Pasta that had, you know, the whole high-tech sci-fi elements in the first place. Yeah. Not one that was so grounded and realistic, especially one that was trying to explain creepypastas yeah, to, in a, a mundane manner. Yeah, like, trying to explain them away, like, explain away the haunted, the seemingly hauntedness of them. Exactly. It and just, then you put a ghost in the machine. <laughs> yeah. It was, I don't know, like I say, to me it just, it smacks of laziness. Like, oh, I want to, you know, end in a big way. Well, okay, he's plugged into the TV. Yeah. That's big. As opposed to... It would have been really effective. Uh, ending yeah. quietly. Yeah. Because that's really how it should have done. It should have mm-hmm. just tapered off like, you know, all I found was a tape and I put it in and it was all like... Whatever. Yeah, you exactly. Know, Sid's like, or hell, I have a greater work to do. Yeah, or even if it had, like, even if the guy had gone into the garage and found his workspace and some of that, and it had been abandoned for years, but there was no Sid. Exactly. So he just let, and he just like his last, like the last sentence is like, Sid's out there somewhere doing his work. So it would that I think that would have been really effective. Um, but we got this. So yeah, we this is what we got. Take it or leave it. Honestly, um, it is just, yeah, it's well written at least. Yeah, there is that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd recommend it. Um, since we're, I don't think there's anything else to say, <laughs> or unless you have anything else to say for it, or? No, I think I've pretty much covered it. I mean, yeah, like, I really only have that one gripe with it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, and I know we're not talking about the rest of the pasta, but 
that's just because there's nothing really to say about it. It's it's a good read. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, it was it was enjoyable. I enjoyed it. Um, I think that's probably why it was on. I think when I first read it, it was on Pasta of the Month at one point, but I can't even find that Pasta of the Month anymore in their backlog. So maybe it was just I ha- it, it just popped up on their front page at one point. But I can understand why. Well, maybe you just don't know how to work the internet. That's true. What is this? <laughs> how do I work this? <laughs> Too many tubes. Anyways. Um, but yeah, I would recommend this to anyone, um, unless you're like a diehard Lost episode genre fan, in which case, yeah, Actually, this, might, say, this might annoy some of them. Because it might, or it may, it may, it may, it may like, not help, uh, I don't know if you want to say help, no, it may just, it may interest them to have another, like, side of an either idea on their, their favorite genre of creepypasta. Fair enough, but if they love it and they don't want, they don't it, want to have the, they don't want their bubble burst. Then like maybe he they should. At the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it's All just right. a matter of you know, it's a personal taste thing. I haven't, I don't even know if I've read a single lost episode. Yeah, uh, pasta before. That being said, I would have still appreciated this one because it what it did, it did well. Yeah. Um, and don't worry, we will be doing the last episode of Pastas. I know they're going to come. <laughs> it, well, it's an entire subgenre, right? Yeah. So we can't really stay away from it. I'm actually surprised we haven't done one yet. Yeah. Um, I, well, technically, I guess, no, no, Candle Cove's not really a last episode because. Because it was it's, never a show. It's not a show, it's, <laughs> it's static. Um, anyway, so, yeah, um, I recommend it. Either you're, even if you're a fan of it, um, or a fan of lost episodes, um, maybe if like if you're not don't want to, unless you don't want to get your bubble burst uh, and with haunted stuff, then don't check it out. Though if you've listened this far, you've probably made your own judgments. <laughs> yeah. As well. <laughs> um, yeah. At this point, anyone who <laughs> anyone who didn't read before we started would probably have already surmise whether or not this would be a good read for them yeah all right so yeah go check it out guys and uh we will move on to the next part of our little thing that we had well i guess what three weeks ago now yeah i i had my little rant and uh about you know people wanting to pick fights when things are said without malice Mm -hmm. things that were just mentioned like things that were mentioned to explain, um, not even to explain, just well, just, suggested, yeah, just to like to show help you understand what what something or someone is like. Like, um, in particular, the last one I mentioned was you know, oh, I couldn't tell which one was which if the father was the mother or the mother was the father because They're of the whole body mod, yeah, and some transgendered individual getting all uppity about that. This time, the narrator says, you know, oh, looking back, I think he might have had autism or been a high-functioning individual with Asperger's. Sorry, I probably butchered the pronunciation there. He's saying that so you understand the way Sid acts. Yeah, like Like, he, it's, yeah, like... It's not, he's not saying anything derogatory about uh, um, autistic individuals or, you know, people with Asperger's. This isn't... There's no malice here. It's just like, okay, here, do you under, are you understanding Sid a little bit better now that I've said that? And he's not even saying that Sid was diagnosed as such. He's just saying, as a layman with perhaps zero exposure to anyone with these afflictions, this is my assumption. Basically, that's what he's saying. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. So, obviously, in the comments, because, you know, we had a couple of trigger words said, we get someone bitching about, oh, everybody's always got to make people with autism and Asperger's the villain. Oh, motherfuckers. Yep. And then, you know, someone, oh, I totally agree with you. I'm glad I wasn't the only one who got all my panties all up in a bunch and chugged right up my ass with the giant stick that's up there. But then we have what I like to call the vindication of Dr. Leviathan. <laughs> <laughs> we have someone defending the author and I approved of this so very much who basically states my point so whoever that commenter is I appreciate the fact that I'm not the only one without my head up my ass (laughs) well I guess I've got you know the cultist here too but just to see that 
someone didn't have their head up their ass. Someone was willing to challenge these people. These comments. Right away. It just, it makes me feel better to be a member of the human race because, yeah, these people are, you know, asshats. They're all just, you know, looking to get their knickers in a bunch and... I'm sick of it, and I'm just glad to see that someone else was as well. Yeah. Because, yeah. It's just, like, I just, when people try, like, they try, like, they hear a trigger word, it's like, I don't, I don't like this. Why is this in the story? I'm going to white knight this. Like, they just have to jump in, uh, jump at, and it's like, you are offending me, sir, and I think you should go away. Because yeah. you put this word in your story. Yeah, it's just, it's completely uncalled for, unnecessary, yeah. and... It just needs to stop because they're not helping their cause. They're not... And he doesn't even... Like, again. They're not attacking something that needs to be attacked. Yeah. And again, in context to the story, like, the guy, like, right, like quotes the, the friggin' word, the sentence, but doesn't go further, uh, doesn't quote the further part where he's like, I don't know, that's just, like, it's just, like, maybe that was like that. I don't, I'm not saying it is. I'm just, it's... He was just speculating, like like he was just like he was like kind of like the top of his head kind of thing that he thought of. Yeah, and it's like nothing like like mean or hateful at all. It's just in hindsight, he sh- this guy, this man, this guy should have gotten some help or something. Exactly, that which was basically obviously being what ignored. It's saying. And I'd like to point out that the story proves that in whatever way, for whatever was afflicting him, because he was not. He was obsessive, and he he needed mental yeah. help. Yeah. Um, because it's not flat out stated, but I'd say it's pretty heavily implied that he murdered his parents. Yeah. Like, if he'd have gotten the help that he needed, he probably wouldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, I'm not saying that whatever was wrong with, well, yeah, it, it's, I'm not saying that Sid was autistic or whatever, because you know what? It's never stated in the story, yeah. so I can't it's know just, as a reader. Yeah, the, the narrator, as a person, speculates. Get, speculates. That's it. And that's fine. But, you know, Sid obviously needed help. Yeah. He was, you know, somewhere in his brain, there were probably more than a couple of wires that weren't hooked up the way they should be. You know, he did need help. And, yeah, just the fact that someone read into... Again. A completely innocent line, um, and just went, you know, completely, you know... Off the rail. Crusader for yeah. it. Um, it's just, it's depressing, mm-hmm. honestly, to me as an individual, because, like I say, you're not helping your cause. You're getting attention, um, but there you're are people. The right there are people who genuinely don't have any sympathy or understanding for um, people with autism and the yeah. like. And, you know what, those people don't necessarily need to be attacked, but they need to be educated. They need to be corrected. Yeah. This guy didn't need that. No, he was... He, like... Yeah, like, it's... Maybe the writer does as an individual, because we're honestly not given a window to no, his we're, opinion yeah, we're at all. Yeah, we're just given a narrator. So, story. Yeah. you know, that may be the case, but considering the fact that it was in there without any malice or anything... I'd say probably not, but again, that's speculation. But there are people who do need to, you know, be slapped upside the head and say, you know what, you know, these are people too. Yeah, exactly. But this guy isn't one, and for people to direct their energies towards someone who doesn't need that... It's just foolhardy and... It's a waste of your energies. Yeah. And it's a waste of your time, and all it does is damage your cause because... First off, just reacting like that in the first place yeah. just makes people want to write you off as, you know, some sort of... Exactly, a fanatic. And fanatics are never good spokesmen. Exactly. Um, you know, reasonable... People who can calm down, be reasonable, and look at both sides, those make your best spokesmen because they can understand where other people are coming from. Yeah. And you know what? I'm probably not the best for that because of my tirade last time I was here, but you know what? It, it's I don't know. It's it, just sad when you when we when you're going through the comments of something of a story that you we actually like enjoyed, 
And then somebody brings the, something like that up, and it's like, really? Yeah, it's just, there's there's no need for it. Yeah. It, it, You're just trying to get attention on uh, the wrong way, especially the way he wrote it. Like I know we yeah. met, I know we read the last one, like the, from the last episode or from the last story, but this one is just like you really didn't need to go with what you did. Like you really didn't need to. Like I'm not, I don't want you want to vindicate him by or him or her by reading what they wrote, and um, I'm just leaving it at ba- we're just leaving it vague. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's no reason for you to write like that, that kind of a comment. It's just, uh, I mean, it's a sad fact about the internet that because you're anonymous, you can write anything you goddamn well please. But yeah, at the same just time, because you can say anything you want and no one will know it was you who said it, doesn't mean that you're you shouldn't help, yeah. say anything of substance. Yeah, like you know what? If he, if the author was like. Fuck, man, Sid was totally autistic. He fucking... That's why he did all this. That's yeah, why exactly. he murdered yeah. his parents. Fucking autistic people need to be put down. If he that said that... Would, yeah, you I know would, what? Would be I would be right there in the comments saying, you know what? I denounce thee as a moron. Yeah. And as an ignorant motherfucker. Yeah. But that's not what we got. But that wasn't the case, and yet someone is denouncing him. As if it, he did that, and he didn't. So, But, yeah. that being said... We got our other commenter who's Which like, totally you know what? Yeah. Suck a dick, because... <laughs> not to be an asshole, but... Not to be an asshole, you're but... Uh, you're an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, to the anonymous commenter there, because I don't have a name here. Yeah. Thank you. We um, salute you. I don't know if you're <laughs> listening, but I really hope you are, because you did something good. And I hope you know that. Yeah. All right, um, yeah, I think I think that's it for this week. Because uh, again, check out the pasta um, lost episodes. It actually took me a couple of mu- uh, weeks to f- uh, to find it again, um, so I'm glad I did. Uh, you can check it out at creepypasta.wiki, as I said. And uh, it took you a couple of weeks it took me like five minutes. Well, when I first, when uh, actually like initially, like uh, when I was like trying to remember this episode because I read it like months ago, and I was like, oh yeah, we should do this for an episode, and then I was looking through it, anyways. Um, <laughs> And you couldn't find it because you couldn't remember what was the name well, of I thought the it was, pasta I actually, that explains I actually, <laughs> lost stories. I actually thought it was lost tapes. <laughs> but anyway, um, you can also check out. It, uh, I'm not sure if Mr. Creepypasta has it on his channel or if it's on Sm- uh, Slime Beast, who, by the way, is the, the writer of the scrape of the story. Oh, um, fair enough. And he actually has a channel, and he had Mr. Creepypasta read it for, uh, for his channel. So we will leave a just uh, a little thing on the descriptor for you, like a link. Um, yeah, go check it out. It's a good story. It's um, a nice, yeah, it's a nice tale. Um, so if you now, obviously, if you don't share our opinion, or if you do share our opinion and would like to get a hold of us, we are both on Twitter. I'm on Review Cultist, and Doctor Leviathan is at Doctor Leviathan. Um, we are on YouTube and iTunes. So leave comments in the YouTube section and uh, send us a review. We could really. Hey, it'd be really cool to, of you if you had uh, if you left us a review how we're doing on the show, and uh, you can also send us uh, an email at aldente rigamortis at gmail dot com. That's a l d e n t e r i g a m o r t i s at gmail dot com, where you can also send us suggestions for other creepypastas you'd like to uh, have us discuss on the show, like maybe some lost episodes. Um, I think we might do Dead Bart. It might be one of the ones that we do soon, but. Um, so until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. And as always, I'm Dr. Leviathan. And this has been El Dente Rigamortis. Sleep well.